Good evening and welcome to WLS tonight. We are um, so thankful that you have carved out some time for us to um, be able to be in relationship with one another and strengthen our relationship with God. If you live down here in the low country, you know that we are anticipating getting some very bad weather this evening. 
Um, so I wanted to make sure that you all knew that um, we, uh, Daniel and I have come to the church early this afternoon um, on Wednesday, and we, we are recording this right now so that we can be consistent in our prayer life and consistent in our worship life, and um, therefore we can still have WLS night this evening. Um, so one thing that I wanted to, uh, two things actually I wanted to mention to you all this evening is we are currently out of Savannah Banana tickets. Um, so we do not have any left. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention to you is that this coming Sunday, we will have a special Christmas Grace offering. Um, Christmas Grace is a mission that is very um, important to us here in Bluff Bluffton, but also on Hilton Head. Um, it's a church-wide effort for us to be able to come together um, to seek out families uh, in the Bluffton and Jasper County areas. Um, and be able to provide Christmas to those families who might otherwise not be able to. Um, so as the, the months lead up to Christmas, I'm sure you will hear lots more about that mission. Um, but this coming Sunday, we will do a special offering um, to start seeding the um, funds for that mission in December. So let us um, begin to worship with one another. One of the things that uh, we are in the midst of is we are in the midst of our uh, movie series. And uh, with our movie series, we, are, um, we really enjoy ourselves. It's a lot of fun to be able to um, highlight different movies each week and um, have the opportunity to try to connect those to God and scripture and try to figure out like what is, what, um, what does that mean for us in our own lives? And so with that being said, we thought it would be interesting for the next um, few weeks while we're in the midst of our summer movie series for on Wednesday nights for us to dive a little deeper into that. Um, so what we're going to do on Wednesdays is we're going to try to take maybe a character or a couple characters um, from the particular movie that uh, we preach on on Sundays. Can you grab the iPad? And um, we are going to highlight that character and try to tie in the theme a little bit more. Um, but we thought appropriately it would be um, also interesting for us to talk a little bit about storms and how we all incur, incur storms. And certainly in the movie The Patriot, um, the characters are in, incurring storms in their life as well. Yeah, the key of, of doing all this is that we want to do we want to have time where we reflect on things that are practical and current. And so you can take a movie and talk about a character, but it's important to apply it to the now. Um, and for a lot of us, we are, some of us are batching down the house or whatever the right word is. They're getting ready for a storm coming and or talking about it or thinking about it or watching the Weather Channel or WSAV or whatever radio station or TV station you listen to. Just wondering when the weather's coming and whether when the storm front's coming. And um, we want to talk about what that looks like in a faith way. Like, what does it mean to be people of faith as we encounter storms of life? Um, whether they're cha ma ma sudden changes that a storm could bring, like our Matthew did several years ago, or just life and how do you handle uh, storms. And so the character of Benjamin Martin from the movie The Patriot um, he encounters a very great storm. He's already gone through a lot of storms in his life, and the past storms that he went through were, um, he felt like he hadn't handled them well. He took up the sword, or in his case, the musket, and his hatchet, and he killed a lot of people. And so the movie's all about how he is forced in many ways to take back that life to, preserve, to care for and protect his family. And last Sunday, we talked about um, what does it mean to be a patriot for God? So a patriot is someone who's devoted, gives their life to, the, to a cause of freedom or a cause of a country. In the case for being Christians, we're called to be patriots for God, which means we're devoted to God. We, we fight for our relationship with God, which brings to us, all of us, freedom. And we talk about what spiritual freedom looks like and how spiritual freedom is different than um, the kind of freedom we would talk about in a in a in a national way or a country or about our country. Um, freedom is not being autonomous or uh, separated from anyone and everyone. Uh, freedom in the sense of being a Christian means giving yourself, devoting yourself to being dependent on God. Um, now the people that fought for our country many, many years ago during the Revolutionary War, 
who came over here, they came here over here so that they could practice their own faith. And a lot of these patriots were very devout Christians who wanted to have the freedom to, to follow their God, to, to have their family follow God. And so the understanding of the pursuit of freedom did have, many, in many ways, a religious understanding. But when it comes to, to following God, that is a dependency, not an independency. Uh, being independent is different than being dependent, obviously. And when it comes to our faith, following Jesus, we're called to be dependent. So how, being that and understanding that, how do we weather storms? Um, you know, I think about the people that gave their life fighting for this country. And if you look at a lot of these folks, they were people of faith. They had a lot of, um, they, 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 were, they were committed to giving their life, sacrificing their life for their families. But that, I think, also comes with the understanding that no matter what you face, no matter what you put yourself in, you're dying you're giving your life for something better, greater than you. Uh, and, and in this case, for many of us, those that are willing to, to pay, to, to give their life, they're giving their life to God. And they're giving their life knowing that God's going to be with them no matter what storm they face. And we're giving our life to Jesus in particular, who showed us what it means to sacrifice and give his life for others. I really love that the connection between being a patriot and then weathering storms. Because right. if you think about... Um, what a patriot is, and you talked a lot about that on Sunday, and how there's this deep devotion and love and care for this interest that you might have. And if we think about it in terms of like having this deep devotion towards God and fighting for that, it, isn't it interesting to think that the storms of life are the things that are constantly trying to pull us away from that? Right. It's, it's, those are the things that we have to fight against and fight for in order to further our relationship with God and truly to be a patriot for him. Exactly, exactly. You know, people say there's no atheist in a foxhole. Well, that's true, but oftentimes storms become uh, a daily foxhole and that we can, we're in that foxhole for a very long time. And even when you're in a foxhole for a long time, oftentimes you... You stop, your mind starts to wander and you start to forget who you need to cling to. And so when it comes to people of faith, um, storms aren't always something that happens in one moment, in one second. A storm is something that can last for a very long time. And for those that have encountered uh, hurricanes um, and have been affected by hurricanes, a lot of us down here have, we know that, that it, it, the storm might come in a couple of hours and it might only last for half a day or a couple of hours. But the effects of it last for a very, very long time. I mean, there's still pe people in the low country that are still, still struggling as a result of Hurricane Matthew. We often forget that. So um, one of the passages of Scripture that we wanted to focus on uh, was the, comes from Isaiah 43, too. And for those that know about Isaiah, the, the, country, the, the people of Israel um, were struggling. They were going through their own storms. And during this section of, of Isaiah, um, they're starting to get the hope that they could come back home to their promised land after being experiencing exile as a result of their own actions and their own um, misjudgments. But this passage, I think, really speaks to us as we go through a storm. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I is obviously God. Um, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now, literally, if you walk through waters, um, especially deep waters, we are afraid we will drown. If we walk through fire, we think we will burn. If we walk through a river, the rivers we fear will take us um, and take us to where we don't want to go. But when it comes to our faith, there will be fires, there will be rivers, and there will be water, rough waters. But if we give ourselves to God, the end of the trip, at the end of the day, uh, we will always be with God. Nothing can separate us from his love, his mercy, his compassion, and, 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 his, and his grace. I also think as you go through line by line and you think about, you know, when, think about a time when people did pass through waters. Well, you know, God parted the sea and right. people walked through it. And then when you pass through the river, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through fire and, you know, um, Shadrach, 
Meshach. Meshach and Abednego. No, I didn't say that right, did I? <laughs> I think I like that pronunciation. How do you say it? Uh, Abednego. Abednego. But I like Abednego better. <laughs> I think he would prefer that to you. <laughs> I'm trying to pull out some like that's kids' impressive. stories. Those yeah, are like yeah. children's stories no. that we teach our children. And that's what and, they're doing. And that's what he they're referring back Absolutely. to, right? And Absolutely. they're reminding us that God God made his promises and and we have proof in these stories that we've we've recounted in the Bible and exactly. and because now people of Israel, like now that you're going through this this storm let me remind you of what I've already done. It's, yeah. um, uh, what do you call, um, you like to remind us, it's um, when you look back and you recall. Yeah. Salvation history. Yes, yeah, salvation hi- yes. history. That's exactly what this is. Right. And, 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 and God is preparing them for going back to their home. And there's a lot of anxiety about that. Right. And, um, and it speaks to us now. And again, as people of faith, those stories in the Bible are not just applicable for people of the Hebrew faith. They're very applicable to us of the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to be reminded that, that God will hold us and carry for us through and has a purpose for us. God had a purpose for Moses. God had a purpose for the people of Israel. God had a purpose for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God has a purpose for us and for every one of us. And that, yes, there are storms, but his purpose is greater than the storms of life. It's not hard to find scripture in the Bible that talk about water and uh, storms. Right. So we have a few. Yes. And this one is um, one most, a lot of you would know. Um, it, it's, uh, it's often referred to in sermons or it's obviously a, a very important story of, of Christ and what he went through. It says, suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake uh, so that the waves swept over the boat. By the way, this is not a tiny lake. This was a very large wake lake which um the so the storm and the waves were very deadly and but jesus was sleeping it says and the disciples went and woke him saying and this, they said this they didn't say it like i'm talking right now they said lord save us like help us we're going to drown it was more yelling <laughs> and um and jesus replied you of little faith why are you so afraid and then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and it was completely calm now it's always important to note that Jesus isn't chastising us when we are fearful or we're afraid. What he wants us to do is he wants to call us attention. He wants to call our attention to him. And that's what he's doing here. He's saying, stop being afraid. I am literally in the boat with you. I'm here. I'm right next to you. And if you have faith in me, you will recognize that in whatever storm you face, I am right there with you. And for people that, ex- that, that are um, of faith like us, that I recognize all that Jesus did so that he could be with us by dying on the cross, um, being resurrected, and, and living among us, we know that he is with us even when we are in a boat that feels like it's going to capsize. Well, I also like scooching back a little bit when the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. Right. So if you take that literally, he's actually sleeping. But how often in our lives are we maybe suddenly, all of a sudden, in a furious storm, and we just feel like Jesus is not there. Like he's right. just not, we don't feel connected to him. We, feel, we do feel like he's sleeping and that he is not going to participate in this storm of life that we're in currently. And so it's us that are the ones that are doubting, and it's right. us that are the ones that have little faith to no faith. Um, because we're c- crying out to him. And I just love that image because he's, it's almost like he's like, hello, like, do you not realize? Right. Like, I am right here. I've never left. I haven't been sleeping. I've been by your side this entire time, and I will not leave you. Yeah, it reminds me of the um, sermon example I gave on Sunday about yeah. how Hollis Kate likes to play and outside, and oftentimes she'll just forget that I'm there. Like, she'll forget that I'm there and she only wants me whenever she needs me and this really speaks to that we 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 think God we think God is sleeping when we need him and reality is God is with us all the time and and he and he loves us and he's so he's willing to um to move the winds and stop the winds and the waves as Jesus did um and he's willing to, to help us and, ma- and make a way for his purpose in us and sometimes I think truly God wants us to go through storms. 
I um, think sometimes we need to go through storms. Yeah, I, I think mean, he truly. wants us to be able to. It yeah. strengthens our faith. Mm -hmm. It 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 calls attention to 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 us making him number one in our life. Right. Um, and I think it's really important. I also think too. Yes, it strengthens our relationship with him, and it calls us. It directs us back to him. But I also think that it reminds us of the people in which he puts in our lives to help weather those storms with. Right. You know, um, one of the things that I was reflecting on is, you know, we go through physical storms and emotional storms and spiritual storms and like all of those things. And to have family and friends and people in, ch in church members that are dear to your life and that are that you're living your life with, that you can weather those storms with, that, I mean, those are the people that are in the boat with you. Yes. Right? And yes. they're the ones that are helping you point back to, to Jesus. And I think all of that is also important. I 100% agree. That's well said. Um, the last pas passage of Scripture is, is a short one. It's also from Isaiah. And it says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Um, it's the prophet speaking to God and reminding all of us who read that when we keep our minds on Christ and minds on God, um, and we and, we, and steadfast means you know always like we try to always keep our focus on God, He will He will keep us in peace, in perfect peace because of our trust in God, and trust is is um, impaired. It's it's essential. It's essential to faith. Um, it's essential to faith, to, it, to, to be able to, be, to trust. And, and one of the ways we can trust God is by recounting who God is and why God matters. To be reminded also, like you said, of our salvation history. And not just our salvation history of the ancient Israelites. No, like our personal. Our actual yeah. salvation history of our life. Mm -hmm. And the times that God has been through us, through the storms of life. Right. The times when we didn't feel like there was a way. Mm -hmm. And God makes a way. And, and in the movie Patriot, uh, Benjamin Martin goes through all this, and he's dealing with a storm. His wife is dead. He has seven children. Um, he's, he's in charge of a, of a large area of land uh, that is being taken. He's, his family is being threatened by, to be killed. Um, he sees all the people he cares about are going to be killed and hurt, and he's going through a literal storm. And you know, what's interesting about that movie is that he's, what I think is making his life even harder isn't just the storm he's going through, it's the storm he's witnessing his son is going through, his children are going through, his daughter who won't talk to him because she's afraid and doesn't, and thinks he's a, he's a, he's a monster because he's a, he's a soldier. She won't talk to him. So there's all these people that he cares about so deeply that all are all going through storms and I think that affects us more than anything else like I think when we go through our own storm that's hard of course but when we see people that we deeply love that we're deeply connected to their storms become our storms and and so that's what Benjamin Martin goes to in the movie and and what gets him through the difficult times is that he has a belief he has a faith he has a trust that what he ends up doing is go, is for the right reasons and the right cause, and for and, and it's and, and that cause is his children and his family, and and when his son, and I'm ruining the movie if you've never seen it, um, not that anyone here has never seen it, but if you haven't ever seen it, um, the second son who dies is 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 really ends up becoming Benjamin Martin's hero. He's the one that believes in the cause, and he ends up getting shot and killed, and Benjamin Martin at the end of the movie starts living, continues to live his life for what his son was fighting for. And that's what ends up eventually saving his family and saving the country. Um, and so that being said, trust is key. To be able to have peace, to be able to be steadfast, we have to be first willing to trust God. Amen. And on that note, as we go through tonight's storm, may we be trusting in God and Christ that God will get us through and more importantly, get all of us through. Not just us, but all of us through. All right, we're going to transition now to Great. praying. So yes. I'm going to do that for you. We come now to a time where we have an opportunity to lift those in our um, congregation, in our community, 
um, up in prayer. And we're so thankful that we have these opportunities. We want to remind you that if you have um, someone that you um, would like for us to lift up in prayer, please send those to us. If you personally need prayer, please send those to us. Um, we want to be able to um, pour out those cries to God on Wednesday nights and then all the other days to come. Tonight we would like to um, continue to lift up the Browning family, Chuck and Tina. Um, they had to put their dog down this past week, um, but they are also still living in grief of um, Chuck's brother-in-law who died last week. We lift them up, um, but we also praise that they have been able to spend um, time with their grandchildren and their children, and I know that brings them joy. We want to praise tonight for the Flores family um, that have had good checkups all around, and we continue to lift them in prayer for recovery and patience. We want to continue to lift up Paula, who is Lori um, Tusk's friend. Uh, we lift up Paula and then also baby Selena. Um, we know that the grief is so strong, and we know that there will be good days and bad days. Um, but we just pray for um, their faith, and we pray for their community to continue to lift them up. We want to continue to lift up Rachel, who is Cher Cheryl Taylor's niece, who is um, facing a rare uh, cancer, but currently going through chemotherapy and um, just has a uh, positive outlook on life. We want to continue to lift up Adam Tavalero and his health issues and um, that he will be undergoing um, surgery very soon. So we want to continue to lift up him and his family. We want to continue to lift up um, Miss Tiller, who is Josh Tiller's mother, um, who is still in recovery. Um, but we just lift her up in her strength and her, um, and her patience. We lift up his family um, as I know that they, um, they worry for her. Uh, we want to um, continue to uh, lift up Gloria Lucas as she um, lost her sister last week. Uh, we lift up her and her family, her many other siblings that are facing grief as well. We want to continue to lift up the Ware family. Um, they are part of our community, and their father has been diagnosed with colon cancer. We pray for Alan, but we also pray for their four children and for his wife. We want to continue to lift up Ken Krupa and his um, challenges, his health challenges, um, but we also want to lift up both Ken and Sue for um, just transitions in life that they are feeling. We want to um, continue to lift up Br Brandy Franson, who is Barry's sister, in her health journey. We want to continue to lift up um, Pastor Robin. Uh, she had her very first Sunday last Sunday on the island. Um, she was very well received within our congregation and our community. But we just pray for um, her perseverance and her endurance as she has um, a lot of ministry ahead of her and is very excited. We want to just continue to pray for both of our campuses, the Bluffton campus and also the Hilton Head campus and all of our leadership and our staff amongst both. Continue to lift up our military who are active and those who are veterans, also their families. We lift up our government. We lift up our teachers as they um, take some rest this summer as they will get right back to it in just a few weeks. And we continue to lift up our, our children um, and our parents and all of our families amongst our community. And tonight we lift up all those in the midst of a storm, those in Florida, those as, the, as, her, as Tropical Storm Elsa moves towards our area. Um, there's a threat of tornadoes. Uh, we lift up all those that are traveling tonight. Um, we lift up those that are in the midst of, of, of traveling. I believe um, uh, Dusty is traveling tonight. We'll lift him up in prayer. We want to lift up um, those that are on vacation that are trying to get home or those that are that are just um, in the middle of this storm. And, um, and then I believe also there's a lot of power out in, um, in the north um, in near New York and area. People have had really bad storms over the past couple weeks. We pray for those people that are in the middle of that. Um, we also want to pray for the, all those that are going through storms of life. As Monica just mentioned, all the prayers of people that we, um, we, we have publicly 
There's also a lot of us that are going through silent storms that no one else knows about. And um, we want to lift up all of you together as a, as a, as a body of Christ, as church, in, in our prayers. So that being said, let us go to the Lord in holy prayer. God, we are so thankful for all the many blessings. We're thankful that we have a church that truly is a community of faith, that, that consists of people from all walks of life, that are all brought together by you, O Lord, for your purpose and your mission and your vision. Hold us together, O God, no matter how, how unstable it feels the boat that we're in is, that you're always with us, Lord. When the waves seem to crash around us, you are with us, Lord. When the rain pours, you are with us, Lord. When the wind starts to blow, Lord, you are with us, Lord. When it seems like we can't get across a, a river or a sea, you part the river, Lord. When we are struggling, when we feel like we're in the fire, you save us, Lord. God, you are with us through whatever we go through. And we are so incredibly thankful. Help us recount those times. You continue to be there for us and continue to, 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 be, to, give, to make a way when it doesn't seem like there is a way. Be with all of us who are struggling tonight, all of us who are grieving tonight, all of those that are hungry tonight. Be with all those that are in need of shelter tonight. Help us, Lord, be free in you. Truly free in you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. As we say that prayer that you so graciously taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We wanted to close out our time together with a, um, with a clip of a song that we sang on Sunday. It was um, so upbeat and so joyful. We wanted to end on that. I also wanted to remind you that this coming Sunday, um, we will be highlighting the movie Tom and Jerry. So if you get a chance to watch it, um, we're excited about Sunday coming. So let us continue to worship.